Hello students, welcome back to the course on Organizational Behavior, Individual Dynamics in Organization. Today we move to the module 7, where we discuss extensively what is motivation. I am Dr. Abraham Sir Isaac. I am a faculty here at School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. As part of the first lecture of the 7th module, we look into the basics of motivation, what is the basic understanding and how do you define motivation. Now, before I move into uh, my uh, theme of the lecture, I would want you to look at an example of, let's say, a situation of hunger and food. Many a time we see that we eat because we are hungry. That is the notion we have when th there is a certain feeling of hunger in us, we tend to reach out to some food particle. We can extend this understanding to a different perspective. Let's look into a situation where you are fully satisfied with what you had. You had a, a very heavy meal, but still now you see that there is a food item which is very tasty and which is the favorite food item of yours. Let us think of an ice cream or any other sweet for that matter. So that particular delicacy, that particular food item is something which can entice you, which can actually lure you to that. So there are two types of attraction that is possible. One that is coming within yourself when it was a feeling of hunger, you were hungry to go and fetch the food. And second would be the food itself is too good and it's your favorite that it is pulling you to that particular food. On this particular note, I'll start today's lecture with the theme, Motivational Research Seeks to Explain Behavior in Terms of Their Whys and Hows. Let's look into motivation and action. Human life is composed of a continuous flow of activity. And it, it is quite evident that every now and then, right from the morning, we are waken up and we see that there are a lot of activities continuously we tend to do. So there's a flow of activity that goes from, uh, say, time T0 to T, T1 hour plus T2 hour plus T3 hour, etc. So besides the infinite variety of covert actions or overt actions and expressions that impact the social and physical environment, there is something which has more covert side in the mental activities of experiencing, perceiving, thinking, feeling and imagining. So when you are looking into action and the reason behind that particular action, it has more of a covert side in the mental activities of experiencing, perceiving, thinking, feeling and imagining. So when these mental activities are part of the flow, the continuous flow of activities, although they cannot be observed directly by others and have no direct impact on the environment, they lead us to the successful completion of the task. And this is where the drive behind, the reason behind that act becomes relevant. Let's look into behavior, how it is linked to motivation. The psychology of motivation is specifically concerned with activities that reflect the pursuit of particular goal and in function form a meaningful unit of behavior. This understanding of meaningful unit of behavior is very much relevant when we look into motivational studies. Motivational research seeks to explain, as I have already mentioned in the theme, whys and hows of the behavior. Why do you do a certain behavior? Let's understand the behavior from a close range. We have a certain behavior. It could be anything in, in terms of organization doing a task, or it could be as simple as greeting your fellow colleague or your boss or your subordinate. There could be as uh, simple as uh, a behavior like, let's say, a uh, uh, smile to the person who is coming against you, coming opposite to you within the, in the corridor. He might or she might not be an acquaintance even. You might not know her or him in the organization. There could be situations where you might know him or her by just the face, but don't know his or her name. So all these situations warrant a typical behavior from you. And the reason why that behavior is elicited, why that behavior is being displayed is what is motivation. What is the reason why that behavior is actually being displayed? And this is a pertinent question we are trying to answer 
with the help of this module which is motivation. Now let's understand clinically what do you mean by motivation. We define motivation as the process that account for an individual's intensity. It's the first important word I would try to bring in today. Intensity, direction and persistence of effort toward attaining a goal. So when we are looking into motivation, there's an objective at bay where you have to get to that particular objective and there is a certain level of intensity, direction and persistence of effort. So when you are looking into effort, that effort should be consistent or persistent. That effort should have a particular direction. Now there is a goal. You should move to the goal. You should move to the direction where you are going towards the goal rather than you are working in counter purpose to a particular goal. Let's say your goal is to complete the task by 5 p.m. A simple, simple goal of today. What happens if you are taking too many breaks in between? What happens if you are uh, indulging in a lot of social chit chat, social interactions, etc.? So you are actually digressing. You are actually diverting yourself from the actual goal. This is where the direction of the effort is critical. You might be putting effort, but the direction could be counter purpose. This is where the, the, the reasoning of smart work comes into picture. The direction is very much relevant when it comes to the effort part. You have persistence, you have direction, and certainly the most important part is the intensity. So I'll explain the intensity in such a way that there will be no doubt after listening to that. So when general motivation is concerned with effort toward any goal, so in this context of our class, we will narrow the focus to organizational goals. So remember, we are looking into OBM, organizational behavior management, and organizational goals is what is relevant to us. And this is our singular interest when we look into our class. But whatever said and done, whatever discussions we are doing here is equally applicable in your life in any walks of life, you, if it could be employed in your home, it could be employed in your society, your community, wherever you want to be, wherever you are practicing yourself as a person, as a person who is uh, taking up the task, that could be easily applicable or easily done with. So the three key elements in our definition are intensity, direction and persistence. Intensity describes how hard a person tries, how hard a person tries. So this element most of us focus when we talk about motivation. So there could be, uh, let's say a student who is in his 11th grade or 12th grade, he strives, he tries very hard to get into a professional course. He does extra coaching, goes for tuitions and goes above his limit or potential to get to what he is actually believing in or wants to. So that is the intensity part where you are putting in the effort which is actually required or sometimes it might not be enough but that is the effort part which displays how hard a person tries. High intensity is unlikely to lead, unlikely to, lead to favorable job performance outcomes unless the effort is channeled in a direction that benefits the organization. Let's say here, uh, recall the discussions we had with respect to strategic intent. If your effort, the intensity of the effort is in counter purpose, is in cross purpose with the actual goals or the objectives of the organization, then you are not going to make any achievement or you are not going to make success in the, achieving your particular goals. So when your objectives and when your goals are not in alignment with organizational objectives, you are tend to fail yourself because there could be situations where those uh, goals need not take to your destination. Those goals are critically not intense enough, whatever be the force you are applying. So motivation has a persistence dimension apart from the intensity. So how hard you try? Let's look into an example where you are trying to understand the, the effort gone behind a UPSC aspirant. So it's not like the UPSC aspirant or a civil service exam aspirant is studying overnight. 
persistent effort every day might be like 10 hours or 12 hours but consistently those efforts are compounded and reflected when the results come out so other unlike other situations which might require only intensity there are situations which require persistence you look into any business people any business magnates who have made their business empire that ha that success has not happened overnight the success has taken those many years of struggle of uh, effort and those many years suggest what is known as the persistence or they underscore what the word persistence means so basically it is not only intensity but it also has a persistence dimension and this measures how long a person can maintain the effort sometimes we see that we are very much passionate about something we we try to start something very in a very critical manner with great passion great fervor but somewhere in 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 the midpoint we lose the fizz we lose the uh, the gas which we had and we tend to fall apart we we tend to lose the sight of the goal this is where persistence is the keyword this is where persistence is quite critical it is not only the intensity but also the persistence that matters now let's look into the textbook definitions of what do you mean by motivation motivation has to do with the forces that maintain and alter the direction quality and intensity of behavior which we have already discussed in detail now middle mist and hit explains motivation as the willful desire to direct one's behavior towards a certain goal many a time we see that motivation comes under discussion only when only when there is a particular goal nobody talks about motivation you might not have heard about motivation when there is no goal in the picture you are being given a target it could be in your organization it could be in your family it could be in your house or anywhere near or uh, dear to you you might be given or you might have a particular a certain uh, goal which actually brings in a element of motivation and you strive to work for that in a particular way now when you when you look into motivation in detail if you recollect i started with two context two possibilities of hunger one is that you are very hungry and you want to have food second is the food is too good that you are being pulled towards that food so let us look here into motivation as a two dimensional aspect one is intrinsic motivation and the second one is extrinsic motivation when both of this combine singularly or together you will get the entire motivation so motivation need not be every time intrinsic motivation need not be every time extrinsic it could be either a combination of intrinsic or extrinsic or sometimes you are triggered only by either one of them so there are a lot of possibilities that happen in terms of degree in terms of variations in terms of the different factors which we look into in detail now let's look into intrinsic motivation intrinsic motivation comes from within an individual so this is very critical when you talk about intrinsic motivation there are certain external factors which always try to stimulate you there are certain external factors which have the capability to trigger you towards a particular goal but here the point of discussion is strictly intrinsic it's strictly internal to the individual so let's say we are looking into intrinsic motivation as something that comes from the individual it is self granted and comes when something meaningful or something that provides you with a sense of purpose you have a sense of purpose to achieve this i have to be at this point after 5 years within my organization or i have to excel in this particular field or i have to do this course to have mastery in my in my organization i have to up, upgrade my uh, my performance i have to take out my best game to beat everybody and be at at a point where i desire so this is this drive this internal drive is what is called as intrinsic motivation which gives you a sense of purpose which lends you a sense of purpose a sense of uh, way to achieve that a sense of motivation to go and get it what you are actually looking at so intrinsic motivation refers to the drive 
that comes from within oneself. So this is the most important functional word when you are looking into intrinsic motivation within oneself. It could be the joy of learning a particular new skill or the satisfaction of completing a challenging task. Many a time you feel that you are given a task. Let's say you have to complete it in five days time. You're given it on Monday and the uh, submission time is let's say uh, Friday evening, 5 p.m. But it is so interesting that you are so engrossed in the task, maybe in, in a day or maybe in two days time, you are about to complete it and you are not even looking into the clock, you are not looking into the time. It is running, but it might be let's say 12 a.m. It might be like 2 a.m. You tend to finish that particular activity regardless of what you are or regardless of the effort it actually required. So there you are guided by a sense of completion. Task being very challenging and you could match your performance to the challenging task and the sense of completion gives you the intrinsic drive to go and complete irrespective of the time required, irrespective of the effort required. Some of the examples of intrinsic motivation are job contentment. You get to a feeling that many a time this is lost in organizational behavior discussions. Many a time there is job contentment. You are happy, you are contented, you are satisfied with the job. So every day you walk into the office, you see that this is a new task. There are some, some people who enjoy their job like that. So this is a new task that you have to do it. You have to uh, achieve this task today. That is the job contentment, which is an example of intrinsic motivation. Another could be individual growth. Many a time you feel that, okay, there is no need for you to actually uh, pursue a course on project management because you are working in, in the field of HR or there is no need for you to have a, a background study of finance or accounting for that matter when you are actually looking into sales job. But this is more of a value addition for you. This is a way to individual growth, a way to get to the growth you desire. So sometimes its intrinsic motivation are reflected as individual growth. Sometimes it is looked into as achievement. You tend to uh, get the best performer in the particular quarter or in the month of let's say October or January or February. So you tend to see that, okay, this time I'm going to approach my task in such a way that I complete the task without any lacunae, without any problems, any failure, so that I will be getting this particular reward, I will be getting this particular award, whatever. If you are a researcher, you have a certain deadline that you are going to publish in this A star journal. So these are some of the situations or some of the achievements which could trigger intrinsic motivation. And finally, yet another example would be learning. Sometimes, if you look into the the research literature in terms of organization and knowledge management and organization, you see that organizations generally have two types of climate. One is the mastery climate where learning is important, where understanding and knowing the, the particular job is important. And the second climate would be performance climate. Let's say you are in an organization where everybody is trying to fight in terms of performance. Everybody is competitive. Everybody is trying to achieve the task within the time and maybe to improvise themselves. So this is an example of a performance oriented climate. Sometimes in some organizations, you can introspect and understand that whether your organization is a performance based organization or is having a climate of mastery or learning climate. So sometimes organization uh, maybe encourages you to learn more, to, uh, to undertake training. There are organizations, let's say uh, some organizations send their, uh, send their employees for an uh, extra learning in, in reputed institutions under their sponsorship. So there are such schemes running. So those situations are part of an organization's rewards and benefits. But in organizations where these benefits are not there, Organizations which are run by sheer performance climate, which are known for performance climate, if you have the drive to learn and understand, to develop as part of the organization learning and the individual learning, then you are driven by intrinsic motivation. So these are few of the examples where intrinsic motivation gets clarified. Now let's look into extrinsic motivation. As is the word extrinsic, extrinsic motivation clearly 
comes from outside of oneself. So this is more into the behavioral uh, theorist like Skinner and all like external stimuli is something which is going to trigger a behavioral response. I am extrapolating that here though it is not directly connected. Extrinsic motivation comes from outside. You might have certain elements which are triggering you to behave in a certain way. Sometimes there are situations which you might not think are conducive for your growth and you are least motivated in those situations, those contexts, those teams, those groups, those organizations. So this will warrant you to switch to a different organization or a different group or a team altogether or to try and impart some of the intrinsic factors which could actually trigger motivation. So looking into extrinsic motivation, it is essentially something that is coming from outside of oneself. It's a response to an action taken by another individual. Sometimes you see that some individuals are behaving to you in a certain way that warrant a, a, a sort of different coercive reaction. Sometimes an inaction is the required or warranted response. So all these parameters or all these actions are judged based on the uh, behavioral pattern that you are being bombarded with. So the behavior you are getting in, the behavior you are facing, that would trigger the reaction to that. So this is a clear cut example of what is called as extrinsic motivation. It usually involves something as simple as an incentive or maybe an anticipation of a reward. Sometimes you see that uh, parents tend to motivate their kids that you do this task and we would fetch you this toy. After some time, let's take the case to the organization level, we'll see that the fringe benefits, the, the, the other incentives, other aspects related to performance, the performance oriented, performance linked incentives, all these are extrinsic motivators which had a seed in the toy which was awarded to a particular child, he is getting the same reward or the same performance when he is extending his performance in a different context. So extrinsic motivation is a tool that can help to motivate employees by providing tangible rewards or completing tasks or reaching goals. Let's look into some of the examples of extrinsic motivation. The first and the foremost one is salary. There is no bigger, mightier extrinsic motivation than salary. If you ask people, let's look into the cohort, the group which is attending this course, 99% would be looking in the particular job or might be satisfied or dissatisfied or might be doing the job or motivated to do, do the job for the simple reason they are getting paid. Sometimes the salary is not up to the level that you expect, but the sole motivation for going in for that particular work could be salary. Sometimes it could be awards, the recognitions, the rewards that is coming your way, so like the key performer of this particular month or the best performer of this particular quarter. So all these things would be maybe an award in, in case of you are a researcher, the best paper award or the best research award. So all these recognitions, the best teacher award or let's say the best businessman of 2023, even you can uh, relate that to a particular product, uh, best car, the, uh, the car of the year, something like that. So that becomes an extrinsic motivation or motivating factor for that particular company to build more new cars of that particular model with that configuration. So this is where something salary and awards more than salary, the awards or the rewards happen to be the extrinsic motivation. The third factor is fringe benefit. When you're looking into fringe benefit, salary is done with. You have the salary component and there is a limitation whereby the salary can motivate you because the companies cannot uh, uh, incrementally keep on consistently increasing salary every time. So they might link some benefits to your performance. There could be fringe benefits like you are being given some food coupons, discount coupons, or there might be some cases where you are actually given some uh, reductions or discounts uh, because you are part of a, a corporate plan in terms of insurance or in terms of a credit card. These are all coming under the fringe benefits. Sometimes the local travel, the travel from your home to the office is taken care of. Sometimes you are uh, being uh, given some recreational plans, some uh, plans to gym 
gym or maybe swimming pool, etc., golf course, etc., something is taken at a cor taken care of at the corporate level, those can all come under fringe benefits and those are all part of extrinsic motivation. And finally, the performance feedback. Many a time people tend to ignore this. But remember, feedback is the breakfast of champions. You cannot thrive, you cannot improve, you cannot be a better person than what you are today if you are not open to feedback. So many a time you tend to ignore that, okay, I am not so keen on feedback, but that's a wrong idea to go ahead with. If you are a person who are really looking into growth, if you are a person who is really striving to perform better than what you were yesterday, then you need to take the feedback seriously. So performance feedback many a time also is considered as an extrinsic motivation, motivator. Now let's look into some of the monetary versus non-monetary motivators that exist within this, the ambit of organizational behavior or general financial perspective. While motivation can be intrinsic or extrinsic, the motivators for individuals can be either monetary or non-monetary. So this is yet another classification, not in terms of intrinsic or extrinsic. Monetary factors are really extrinsic to work. Something like salary, wages, which we have already discussed in detail. Bonus plans, which, which give you a, a different level of motivation to work more. Sometimes you, you, you are in a sales job. You get a more you get out, get that output which is more than the previous quarter. So sometimes there is a linked bonus associated with that. So there is a bonus element that comes into picture and you are getting more than what you are actually looking at. There are some critical financial incentives that are coming your way because you achieve the target. There are some profit sharing mechanisms. You are not given a particular salary in return or in turn you are actually given something like a profit sharing. If you make profit, sometimes these uh, the cine actors, the movie stars, they work on this profit sharing mechanism. Sometimes the partnership, the big investors are taking uh, in investments on a profit sharing mode. So this will ensure that they lend more time, they lend more effort to that particular cause. And this is the extrinsic motivation that is pulling down them. Stock options, sometimes this is yet another mechanism where it can act as an extrinsic motivator and can ask you or, or can demand your time and effort to the particular cause. Let's look into some non-monetary motivators. Non-monetary factors are rewards intrinsic to work. So this is the distinction you should have in your mind that there are some non-monetary motivators also. Something like status. Sometimes there is no increase in the salary that's happening. Sometimes there are no fringe benefits associated with uh, your job. Sometimes there are no actual benefits in terms of uh, performance that is coming your way. You are only given a higher status. There are people who are very much motivated sometimes to look or understand that they are being promoted from assistant manager to manager, manager to senior manager, DGM, GM, assistant vice president, additional vice president, VP, project director, etc. So the whole level of hierarchy is what is waiting for you. Those are the people who are looking into status as a non-monetary motivator. There could be also uh, situations of appreciation and recognition. Sometimes, as I already mentioned, you are being chosen as the best employee. You are being chosen as the best company that's performed in, in the previous quarter across your sector or you might be the chosen best researcher in your domain, or you might be, uh, sometimes there are some rankings in terms of the best institutions. So these are all non-monetary motivators. Sometimes you are ranked as the, the best 2% world top 2% researchers within the world. So all these are essentially non-monetary motivators. The third factor is work-life balance. Many a time you choose your organization not because of money. You choose your organization not because of your colleagues. You choose your organization not because your capability is matching the required task that is there in that particular organization. Many a time is a work-life balance that you choose. I'm not so keen on getting in the, the extravagant salary. I'm not so keen on being the, the CEO, but I'm more keen on, let's say, the work-life balance. I want 
some time to be to be with myself i want some time to be with my family i want some time to enhance my other talents or potentialities so that will lead you to be a person who is mindful of the work life balance another aspect could be delegation sometimes you feel that okay the 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 boss has gone out of town you are being delegated you are being assigned the responsibilities of the of the particular boss or let's say you are being made the head of a particular department in the absence because he or she is going out of town and they feel that you are capable to execute that particular task so these are some non monetary motivators there is no particular monetary motivation or monetary uh, increment associated with that particular activity it is just yet another non monetary motivator where you try to get the feeling that you are the person who the the boss trusts the most and he has given the whole responsibility in his absence so delegation could be yet another non monetary motivator another factor could be the working conditions sometimes you might hate the job the task you are doing sometimes you might hate the people you are working with your colleagues the the, the coworkers sometimes you might hate the boss whom you are working for but you might feel that the working conditions on the basis of infrastructure is very soothing is very very posh and very sophisticated so that might be the 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 extrinsic motivator that might be the non monetary motivator look into uh, not the no, not the physical aspects let's look into the psychological aspect you might have a very tough task in hand but you are um, coworkers or your colleagues are very supportive your coworker support is too good that you feel always welcome there's a sense of belongingness there's a sense of ownership within the particular group so that particular working condition could be yet another non monetary motivator another aspect could be job enrichment many a time you feel that your responsibility in the job is added you tend to do or tend to get a new task which is challenging but yet it teaches you a lot you could you could uh, put your uh, you know mind and your effort in something which is actually going to the output of the company you can actually contribute to the increased revenue of the company all these aspects totally relates to the job enrichment that the organization is able to provide you another important factor could be job security many a time people don't uh, take the job for the salary rather they take the job for the job security that it provides they are not interested in the the humongous income that they are going to lose out but they are key in the consistent income that they are going to get they are they are all happy with the job security that they are having so this is some of the non monetary motivators that exist in the organizational setup so this was a lecture on on the introduction of motivation where i tried to establish uh two different aspects one is extrinsic and intrinsic if you look into the theme of the lecture motivation is entirely all about the why and how of how you go about a behavior when you are looking into a behavior be it in the organization be it in the in the surrounding in the community in your home why you are going to do it or how you are going to do it and what is the basic reason why you are being driven to do it so these are some of the pertinent questions i hope you have got answers in this we'll see more details of motivation in the next lecture till then take care bye bye